empower melanated people. When we talk mm -hmm. about who we really are as guys and, and right. understanding that our melanin is so power and it connects us in a way that the reason why they fear black, the reason why they fear is because they the lack that they have of it. So you have a person that has ha, has the lack of pigment, the right. lack of melanin, right. that they know that they will be annihilated. So they have the lack of compassion. Mm -hmm. That mel melanin comes with compassion. Melanin comes with soul that mm -hmm. we call it. We call it soul. We soul brothers and sisters. That's the melanin that connects us. Right. So the people that don't have it have are are a little. And I'm, I'm gonna say this carefully. <laughs> are a little less. And, and 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 they're acting out of a, a deficiency. Mm -hmm. The only way they can they, they have to rob, steal, rape, kill, and fight or flight in, okay. or, in order to survive. Exactly. People who didn't have what we had, and when I say we, I speak of the mm -hmm. melanated people. Right. They had to be savages. They they're acting as animals. Right. So they're the ones that are actually closer to animals. They're the ones that are actually the true savages <laughs> i'll tell you one thing melanin doesn't fix and that's stupidity welcome back everyone uh so so by now you've seen this video of this guy nick cannon and uh his rant this very nazi-esque rant um, about anti-white conspiracy theories, about how white people are less than, uh, they're subhuman, they're inferior, they're genetically defective animals. <laughs> All of this coming from a guy named Nick Cannon. Uh, I, I gotta admit, I have no idea who the guy is uh, until this story popped up. Um, but apparently he's been on some CBS Viacom show. We're gonna talk about this story and how the media reported it, or rather what they didn't report on it. But first, give me just a minute to tell you about this episode's sponsor, preparewithdronetech.com. When you see what's going on in our country right now, there's plenty to be concerned about. Social unrest is making life very uncomfortable and it could quickly get worse. On top of that, a second wave of coronavirus is threatening to devastate our economy and our way of life again. Will we have severe food? shortages this time? Will supply chains get cut off if people can't work? Will you even be able to go to the grocery store? These are realistic dangers, so don't let yourself be caught unprepared. Here's what to do right now. Go to www.preparewithdronetech.com and start building your emergency food supply today. The experts at My Patriot Supply are the only people I trust and use. And right now, you can save $100 off a full four-week supply of delicious, nutritious meals the whole family will love. My Patriot Supply makes it easy to be prepared at all times. And saving $100 off a life-saving four-week supply of food is too good to pass up. The second half of 2020 is gonna be wild. So go to preparewithdronetech.com and get ready right now. That's preparewithdronetech.com. Do it now. So he goes on this show and uh, he, he spouts all this clear, clearly racist anti-white rhetoric um, and how everything is based on melanin levels. You know, black people and brown people are basically superior to humans, or um, superior to white humans uh, because we lack melanin that they have. And supposedly this... Uh, skin pigmentation gives them all kinds of special powers uh, to the point of being gods. He says that they're gods at one point. Let's go to what it really is then. When we talk about the power of melanated people, when we talk mm -hmm. about who we really are as gods and, and right. understanding that. When we talk mm -hmm. about who we really are as gods and, and right. understanding that. Wrong. But melanin definitely doesn't have anything to do with psychology or any of these other traits that this guy is attributing it to. Um, but needless to say, uh, I'm not surprised at all to hear this rhetoric increasingly coming from the mainstream. It's something I've been talking about for years now that we should worry about because it just seems like it's being normalized over time. This hatred of white people and this constant reinforcement and justification of that hate. And then the people who normally would be the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest voices against racism are the ones rationalizing and, and, and acting like, oh, well, this is different when you're racist to white people but what did actually surprise me is that he actually got fired from cbs viacom uh and uh although now all these other uh people like diddy p diddy or whatever he's calling himself now offered him a job and i'm sure he's going to get a job somewhere because you know being racist against whites is not a problem it's open it, it's you know it's, it's okay to do but as always <laughs> the narrative must not be contradicted and that's what I was just talking about, how whites can't be racist and you can be racist to whites. That's the narrative. 
Uh, and you probably noticed, like I did, that all the headlines and stories out there, all of them, literally, like even on like Breitbart and, and uh, right-leaning sites, which is kind of baffling, although if you read the articles, you'll get a little bit more information. But every one of these headlines re uh, lists anti-Semitism as the reason he was fired. And that's because that's what CBS said. CBS Viacom came out and said, we're letting you go because of your anti-Semitic statements. And it's true, he, he did make anti-Semitic statements. He's made anti-Semitic statements going back seven years. So this is nothing new. Um, and on that point, actually, uh, he's admitted uh, on multiple occasions that he is, in fact, a racist. Nick Cannon. Yes. Yeah, ever had anything happen to you besides me and my hatred for you right now? Anything <laughs> racist happened to you recently? Uh, I don't really look at it like that because I'm the racist. Mm. You're the racist. I'm the I'm very racist. I'm blatantly Please racist. Tell us Example. I've never heard someone so proud of it before. I am <laughs> proud to be racist. Or a racist is one who believes their race is superior over certain things. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? There's certain things that I believe my race is superior at. So, yeah, he did have some anti-Semitic moments going back. I mean, this guy, you listen to him, and he sounds like the black Israelites who are incredibly anti-Semitic. They hate the Jewish people. Uh, a lot of this violence that you saw in New York against Orthodox Jews was coming from um, uh, black Israelites or followers uh, of that ideology. Nick Cannon obviously subscribes to that ideology. I mean, this isn't just run-of-the-mill bigotry. This is like eugenics, Nazi-esque, um, high-level kind of stuff. And you know, I also pointed out uh, that he calls himself a god at the beginning of his rant. He says black people are gods. I mean. I could be wrong, but did the Nazis ever even claim that they were gods? I mean, they claimed that they were superior, but did they ever claim they were gods? I don't know. I could be wrong about that. So, I mean, I, it just seems like this guy's taking it to a whole new level. Like I was saying, literally every article out there, every single one of them, the headline is that it was anti-Semitism they was fired for. Now, this is a problem because if you read the actual articles, they never even mention white anything. They don't mention that this anti-white rant, and that's concerning to me. I mean... Why wouldn't it be? He, he, White people are human beings too. Why would you not apply the same standards? So let's just look at some news stories here and just see how they're reporting this because it just seems like they're ignoring the, all the anti-white rhetoric and just focusing on anti-Semitism from him, which again, I've pointed out has been, you know, he's been saying for years now. It's nothing new. So we'll look up Nick Cannon here. Nick Cannon to remain at Fox show after Viacom CBS fired him over anti-Semitic comments. Okay. I had nothing to do with the white comments. Those were okay. Dwayne Wade tweets, delete support for Nick Cannon after actor was fired for anti-Semitic remarks. Okay. Uh, I wonder if he was supportive of him uh, for the white comments, but then he got uh, canned for the anti-Semitic ones, so then he has to pull his support because one is acceptable, one the other isn't. And then we got Nick Cannon apologizes for anti-Semitic remarks. Fox keeps him on Matt Singer. Okay, so then on Fox, it's just talking about anti-Semitic remarks. And so you just keep going here, and it's just a total focus on his anti-Semitic comments. Nothing, nothing about his anti-white comments, which is just mind-blowing. I mean, here we have Nick Cannon apologizes for his hurtful and divisive words towards the Jewish community. Not his white ones. Does he apologize for any white comments in here? Nope, nothing in here about white comments. The big issue here, as far as I can tell, and this is just a one more thing in a, in a big, in a long pattern of this, where it's just over time, they're kind of making it acceptable to, for racist hatred against whites, to blame all your problems on whites, uh, to make up conspiracy theories that involve white people putting you down and, and holding you down and oppressing you. Just like, you know, the anti-Semitic uh, uh, rhetoric that they had a problem with is these anti-Jewish conspiracy theories, that like what you hear from the black Israelites. The, the, the white conspiracy theories are exactly the same. You just replace Jewish with white. I mean, it's the same thing. The issue here is that people are basically being trained. Uh, since nobody's really opposing it, you got people like me opposing it, you have you know random people, there's no real opposition. There's no marches. Nobody's standing up and saying, this is wrong. We need to stop this because if we're against racism, if we're going to claim to be anti-racist, that's racism. We need to stand up against it. But they don't. In fact, they encourage it. Uh and uh, just a side note, it's interesting that both the anti-fascist and the anti-racist are the opposite of what they claim to be. And that's another baffling aspect of all this, is that a lot of the people pushing it are white people. And I don't understand why. Do they just think that by doing it that they'll be spared any sort of negative backlash? Uh, are they not worried about their kids or how their kids are going to be treated or your kids' kids in a couple generations? Because if this continues... Uh, 
it will become normalized in a generation or two and then what's going to happen forget what's going to happen look at what's going on right now look at what's going on uh with your tax dollars what your tax dollars are paying for over at the national museum of black history and culture aspects and assumptions of whiteness and white culture in the united states wow that sounds scary and uh by the way the american flag is facing the wrong way there uh <laughs> you would think the smithsonian would know that but apparently not and that was actually pointed out to me by uh, one of our Discord members, WJ Spade. Um, good guy, full of lots of good information. Come check him out in Discord. Uh, but what we have here is the white dominant culture, or whiteness, refers to the ways in which white people and their traditions, attitudes, and ways of life have been normalized over time and are now considered standard practices in the United States. So the claim here is that these are all traits of white people, that white people have made the main culture of the United States uh, through... Uh, I guess force um, I guess they're claiming that no other culture has any of these traits uh, or you know none of these things are part of anyone else's culture which I would completely disagree with um, I think most of the world probably operates this way but uh, apparently rugged individualism is bad and it's white um, the individual is the primary unit self-reliance oh self-reliance that's bad I, I can't tell you how many years I've been saying that the Democrat Party wants black people to be completely reliant on them so that they'll always be in power because these people will always need them and here it's like it's like they're admitting that I, I don't understand independence and autonomy are highly valued rewarded uh, I'm I'm really confused here independence is no longer good subjugation is good it's very Orwellian <laughs> Individuals are soon to be in control of their environment. You get what you deserve. Yes, uh, the choices that you make determine your life. And they do have, there is a cause and effect there. And uh, <laughs> I don't think that's a white thing. I think that's just how reality and life works. And not just in our culture. I mean, that's just nature in general. Uh, the family structure, the nuclear family, which we know is under attack by BLM. It's right there on their website about who they are. Emphasis on scientific method. Oh, that's bad. And how often are we hearing that it's conservatives on the right that are anti-science? Yet here, apparently, emphasis on the scientific method is now bad. They, they can just have things both ways, apparently. Objective, rational, linear thinking, cause and effect relationships. <laughs> uh. So then we have work ethic. Hard work is the key to success. <laughs> uh, what are they saying? That being lazy is the key to success? That hard work... Uh, be, and, and becoming successful from your hard work is some sort of white idea that's brought on by white supremacy. I mean, uh, go to Japan or, or, or China and these countries, they value hard work. Uh, and just, I mean, in nature, if we had no cultures at all uh, and we were just tribes, just tribes roaming around, the hardest working tribe is going to be the most successful. There's no doubt about that. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. And just to wrap it up here real quick, I'm just going to kind of go through the rest of this quickly, but we got future orientation, plan for the future, delayed gratification, progress is always best, tomorrow will be better. I mean, these are all good things. This is a... Uh, being optimistic, planning for the future, uh, waiting to spend all your money. You know, you could go on vacations every year, spend all your money on on toys and computer stuff, and, and then you never have money to pay off your bills. You can never actually enjoy life because that's all you're ever doing. You're always just catching up. And you can do it that way, but it's obviously better to do it the other way. Time, follow rigid time schedules, time viewed as a commodity. Uh, is this, isn't there like a stereotype that black people are always late? Uh, is that, this, this pamphlet reads like something that came from the Ku Klux Klan. It's like enforcing all these negative stereotypes about black people and portraying white people as this superior, uh, godly group of people. I, <laughs> I don't understand it. It doesn't seem, it seems to be doing the opposite of what it intends to do. So what can we do to to counter this insidious creeping hate I think the answer is that we need to stand up for ourselves we need to protest and make noise something that we don't usually do and I, I think that a lot of that comes down to a lot of us are working we have families we don't want to go out and protest and get in trouble get arrested and have records we we don't we do respect authority I mean we may have issues with the police but ultimately we, re we respect the institution and uh, we respect people who want to keep the community safe. And so you don't really see us out there a lot protesting. That's why they call us the silent majority. Uh, but we need to st we need to maybe stop that. We need to maybe take some risks and get out there because otherwise we're not being seen. And I, I realize that the counter to that will be that the media will always portray us in a negative light. And that's true, no matter what we do. Uh, so 
it's it's completely nuts, but we got to do something. We, we have to stand up to what is essentially a communist uprising uh, that's been kind of slowly happening for a while, but really seems to be ramping up right now. We need to somehow get out there and stand up for our country. Our, our culture is not evil. We have a great culture, a culture that's constantly improving. If we just tear it down, it's going to be replaced with something much worse. There is no way that these people are going to replace this culture that we've been building all this time. And they're just going to come in with uh, Marxism or communism and just and make something better. That's not going to happen. The more that this goes on unopposed, the more that the younger generations are just going to think that that's how it is. And they're going to go along with it. And by the time that your kids are grown or their kids are grown, it's going to be too late. It's going to be ingrained into the culture at that point. It may already be too late. I kind of I kind of worry that it is already too late. But if nothing else, uh, you can support this channel so that I can continue doing my small part to call out this stuff and spread the word. You can do that by supporting this channel's sponsors like preparewithdronetech.com and healthwithdronetech.com. Or you can also do so by supporting me on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.